but I've not flown on an eagle's back till today. Well, now that it's a bit easier to talk, let me thank you properly for saving our lives and bid you welcome to Norinbad, our home. Nordri's father, the Lord Gorin, will want to speak with you. Nordri's gone ahead to report on the Gundabad raid and to tell him about everything you did for us. We're grateful for the welcome, but in the rush of battle and our escape, I don't believe we actually caught your name. Oh, confound me for an old fool! Bruni, son of Bane, at your service and your families. I'm captain of the Nordenbad Guard and a servant of Lord Gorin. Why did you lead your warriors against Mount Gundabad? We keep a careful watch on the orcs of the mountains. When we saw them gathering in large numbers at Gundabad, we had reason to believe they were preparing to move against us here. We didn't like our chances against that many orcs, but we knew about the hidden weapon at Gundabad, so Nodri and I led a small force there to use it against them. What can you tell us of the device you used to collapse the ceiling at Gundabad? I've never heard of such weapons. It was an ancient defense made by the dwarves who dealt Gundabad long ago. Nobody understood the qualities of stone better than the dwarves of old. And they knew that just the right sound can cause solid stone to split. They used that knowledge to build a defense against any enemy who might force their way past the gates of their home. But Mount Gundabad has been in the hands of the orcs for centuries. How did you know about so ancient a weapon? Aye, it's been in the hands of the orcs for many a year, but not straight through. I was only a lad when my people fought a great war against the orcs, but my father helped sack Gundabad. He was one of the stone workers who found the weapon. It made a big impression on him, and he told me the tale so many times I was sure I could find the thing and use it against the orcs. But how did you know it would still work after all this time? <laughs> we didn't. The whole thing was a gamble. Luckily, it paid off. We would be pleased to speak with Lord Gorn. Just make your way past the door as you see yonder and you'll find him within. The guards have been instructed to let you pass. I suspect I'm the first man to see the inside of these halls. I am certain I am the first elf to do so. You should go speak with Lord Gorn. What can you tell us of the device you used to collapse the ceiling at Gundabad? I've never heard of such weapons. It was an ancient defense made by the dwarves who dealt Gundabad long ago. Nobody understood the qualities of stone better than the dwarves of old. And they knew that just the right sound can cause solid stone to split. They used that knowledge to build a defense against any enemy who might force their way past the gate. But Mount Gundabad has been in the hands of the orcs for... Aye, it's been in... He was one of the stone workers who found them. But how could you be certain it would... <laughs> we didn't. The whole thing was a gamble. Luckily, it paid off. Am I correct in guessing that you might have a similar defense here? Hmm. Some things are best left secret. Do you think the orcs will follow us here to Nordenbad? Escaping on eagles like we did will throw them off the trail a bit, but it won't be long before they realize it was a group of dwarves that hit them first, and that'll get them thinking about us here. It's not like they're not thinking about Nordenbad anyway, but I'll let Gorin tell you more about that. At your instruction, the eagles brought us east for many leagues, over many high mountain peaks. Where are we now, exactly? Aye, it's east you've come. Clean over the Misty Mountains and along the length of the Grey Mountains. You've left the lands of Eriador behind. You're on the northern edge of the land of Rovanion now. I had best not keep Lord Goran waiting. guess that such a place still existed in these mountains.
You should not keep the lord of these halls waiting. Yes, sire, those I spoke of. Allow me to present to kinsmen, Farron of Erebor, and also Andriel and Eridan, his companions. We succeeded in our task, and I live to tell of it, thanks only to their aid. You are most welcome here, kinsmen, and no less so your companions, be they man, elf, or eagle. Welcome all to Nordenbad, last hall of the Longbeards in the Grey Mountains. You have returned to me, my son and my oldest friend, whom already I mourned as lost. For this, you will forever have my gratitude and the hospitality of these halls. Know that this is not something lightly given, for never before have we allowed any but our own folk to pass these gates, and no eyes have gazed upon the hidden lake of Azanzaram, save those of our close kindred. Yet for what you have done, I will gladly lay aside our ancient oath of secrecy. This lake, did your kin create it? Nay, my ancestors discovered a Zanzaram even as you see it. We have worked with care to enhance what we found. A chip here, a tap there, fashioning bridges, halls, and tunnels. But always, we have taken care to preserve the great gift we were given. It is beautiful. I am honored to behold it. May I ask how it was you happened to be in so unlikely a place as Mount Gundabad? One does not go lightly into so foul a pit. We were seeking a servant of the enemy, a man known as Agandar. Agandar? We are familiar with that one. Curse his black heart. He appeared before our gates some weeks past, and called us to parley. In the name of Sauron the Great, so he said. A parley? What did he ask of you? He demanded that we yield ourselves up to the mercy of Sauron, as if there was any mercy in the Dark Lord. He lays claim to Nordenbad, telling us if we turn over our halls and riches without a fight, our lives will be spared, and we will be free to seek a new home elsewhere. Of course, we would have nothing of that. When we defied him, he grew wrathful, threatening us with the fiery doom that overtook our ancestors. Fiery doom? What did he mean by that? I fear he may have allied himself with the dragon Orgast, who dwells in these parts. With such a beast at his command, we would have little hope of resisting him. Perhaps the best course would be to destroy this dragon before Agandaur sends him against us. Well, uh, destroy Orgast? If only it were that simple. The attack on Gundabad would be a peaceful stroll around the lake in comparison. Nay, if it were so easy to slay dragons, there would be many more dwarves still dwelling in these mountains. Urgost has never taken notice of us before. We rather hoped it would stay that way. They say it does not pay to leave a live dragon out of your calculations if you live near one. And we cannot allow Agandar to gain such a powerful ally. Agreed. Where can we find Urgost? You do not lack for courage, I will grant you. Yet we know not where the dragon dwells. No dwarf has discovered his lair and lived to tell of it. Perhaps Radagast knows this secret, or can discover it. Seems there is little that happens in Wilderland that escapes his notice. Who is Radagast? Radagast the Brown. He is a wizard, a master of birds and beasts. He keeps to himself mostly, but he's a decent enough sort as long as you mean no harm to the wild creatures he befriends. He dwells within the forest of Mirkwood, away to the south. Perhaps your companion Belaram would know where to find him, for it is said that Radagast is a friend to the Lord of Eagles himself. 
Much as I'd like to avoid Mirkwood, seems like it'd be worth our time to speak to this wizard. Indeed. But before you set out, please accept a token of our gratitude. Seek out my steward, Galar. I have instructed him to open our vaults to you. I believe you may find something within that will be of service in the days ahead. I still can't believe I'm alive. I thought I would draw my last breath in the fetid air of Mount Gundabad. Mind you, I'm not complaining. Tell me about Goran, your father. Is he a king? King? <laughs> oh, no, no. He is merely the lord of Nordabad. We acknowledge Dane Ironfoot as the rightful king of the Longbeards. Not that he has any idea of our existence. What comes next for your folk? I'm afraid we're all out of tricks to play. All we can do is prepare our defenses. Hunker down and wait for whatever the winds of war might blow our way. Tell me about Bruni, the other dwarf who survived Mount Gundabad. Ah, uh, Bruni is the captain of our guard. The terror to the orcs of these mountains. He's been my father's best friend since long before I was born, and he taught me how to wield an axe, and what it means to serve. It sounds as if you have been in Mirkwood before. I've been around it a lot more than in it, and that suits me just fine. I don't care for that wood. Don't know how anyone could. But I've often traveled to the eaves of the forest to trade with the Bjornings who live thereabout. It was on such a trading venture that I happened to meet Radagast. Who are these people, the Bjornings? A hardy folk, and brave as any who dwell between Mirkwood and the Misty Mountains would need to be. Under their chieftain, Grimbjorn, they've kept the mountain passes and river crossings open, even in these troubled times. But I've heard rumors of war on their borders of late. The high passes may now be closed, at least to those without the benefit of eagle wings. Can you tell me more about Radagast? He's an unusual sort. Friend to all beasts and birds. To be honest, I don't think he cares much for dwarves. But maybe he just prefers the company of animals. One thing's certain, there are few people with more knowledge of this part of the world. He even spoke of Nordenbad as if it were common knowledge. Do you believe we will be a match for Urghost? <sighs> it's not that I doubt your courage and skill. And I'd be mighty glad to no longer have a dragon as a neighbor. But truthfully, I wonder if anyone can overcome such a beast. I just hope your luck proves equal to your daring. Farewell, Nordry. Must be that ranger I've been hearing about. Word of you has spread like a beard on fire. I'm pleased to meet anyone who strikes a blow against the enemy. And I hear you struck a very hard blow indeed. So, how can I help you today? You've hidden in this isolated cavern for a long time. Could it be that you found something precious, like Mithril? Oi! Oh, we've no such wealth as Mithril here. Not that I haven't dreamt of finding a vein of true silver. I work iron and a bit of ordinary silver or gold. A few gems here and there. Mostly we hide to escape the notice of the dragons. Bad blood between dwarves and dragons as well, you know. And then there's all the orcs. Ah, but I dream of a day when we could trade for finer goods. I've been working on a silver belt studded with crystal with a special mount for the gem I crave above all others. 
The gem that comes from no mine. Is that burnt hair that I smell? Well, well, hard to be a smith without getting a few sparks in your beard. What do you expect when you're working with a hammer and forge and hot metal? <laughs> They've taken to calling me Burly Burnt Beard. Used to have a beard down to my belt. Well, shorter is safer. As long as you keep a bucket of water handy, there's nothing to worry about. How great are your skills as a smith? I'm no braggart, but I'll put my skills up against any smith, dwarf, elf, or man. You may think I don't know much, being set apart from others of my craft. But I'll tell you a little secret. My grandsires go back all the way to the smiths that worked alongside the great elven smith, Celebrimbor himself. In the days of ancient Erykian, there was a great friendship between elves and dwarves. We've passed down skills from forgotten times. I know runes of power and other secrets that give my weapons and armor a hidden strength you'll not find elsewhere. You won't complain about my work. Tell me of Celebrimbor. None was a greater craftsman of jewels and forger of metals than Celebrimbor, who was Lord of Erigion. Close friend he was to Narvi, the great stone master, and to my grandsires. He even made seven rings of power for the dwarves. It was Celebrimbo who knew that Sauron had betrayed the elves by making one ring. He heard the enemy declare himself master over all. He was killed in the first war against Sauron, and many of his secrets were lost. Narvi and his kin were lost as well. Only one of my ancestors escaped to carry the tale. So it's been told from grandsire to grandsire to me. What lore do you know of Eregion? The lore passed down from me grandsires is little enough. That Eregion lay west of the Misty Mountains near Moria. That the elves of Eregion were of a kind known as Noldor, and were clever craftsmen. The Noldor didn't know in the beginning that Sauron was evil. Sauron came to Erigion and taught them how to forge rings of power. But after Sauron was revealed, he invaded Erigion and destroyed it. Nearly 5,000 years ago, that was. Doubt there's much left of the place now. But Sauron's fixing to do the same thing all over again. Even here in the far north.
Back, I see. So you're the Dunedain Ranger, eh? I can't see what all the fuss is about. I suppose you're tougher than you look, though I heard you had a dwarf helping you. Are you here to buy something? I've an excellent stock of the best Norton Bud craft work, so speak up. Time's a waste. Goran sent me to you. He said I should speak to you to receive a token of his gratitude. Yes, yes. He may have mentioned it to me. It was rather too generous of him. Not that I don't appreciate what you did, but how does he expect me to increase our wealth by giving our best work away? Well, here you go. Take your pick. Are you here to buy something? Speak up! Time's a waste. Are you always this cheerful? Well, let's see. We've got an orc army grown, a dragon hungry for dwarf snacks, and one of Sauron's lieutenants making threats. Pardon me while I break out in a song and dance. Now see here, I need to do some business, so how's about you buy something before I get downright grumpy? Who trades with you in such an isolated place? We've had a rough time of it here, I won't deny it. Mostly we managed some trade with the Bjornings, the men who live down south of us in the vales of the Anduin. They have good use for our metalwork, and they bring us foodstuffs in return. Otherwise, there'd be mushrooms for breakfast, mushrooms for lunch, and mushrooms for dinner. You wouldn't believe how many ways we've learned to cook mushrooms. That's enough jabbering. If you're not going to buy something, let me get back to my work.
It is clear the folk of Nordenbad take pride in their work. setting out to find the dragon? We've spent many long years trying not to be found by one. Ah, but then the three of you did walk into Mount Gundabad alone, and you lived to tell the tale. So if anyone has a chance against Urgost, it might be you. Ordinarily, I'd be dead set against riling up a dragon. It seems Agendaur has already done that. So I'll just wish you luck, and let it go at that. What about you here? Do you believe Nordenbad will be safe after what we accomplished at Mount Gundabad? We killed hundreds of orcs when the roof came down at Gundabad. Maybe thousands if we're lucky. That's all the fewer to march against us here. But that just means we went from certain defeat to likely defeat. If the dragon joins up with Agendaur, we're right back at certain again. I think it would be better if we did not go looking for the dragon. Who can say? It's more you I'm worried about than us here. Old you may be, but dragons are dragons. Dragons have been overcome before. Better to face him on our terms than to wait for him to come to us. Farewell, Bruni. Mirkwood is a place I prefer to fly over, not into, but we are ready to go. Radagast is a good friend of yours? The Brown Wizard has been a close friend of the Eagles since he first came to Middle-earth and settled into the forest that is now called Mirkwood, even before it came to have that dark name. That was long before I was born, but I have visited with him many times in his home at Rosgabel when I would bring him news from afar but I have not seen him since he abandoned Roscobel. Why would he abandon his home? He was gone from his home before I could ask, but there has been a growing threat and darkness in the south of Mirkwood. I believe Roscobel is no longer safe, even for a wizard. But fear not. I know Radagast's favored places in the north of Mirkwood. We will find him, or I will bring you to a place you are likely to find him at the very least. We must hope Radagast can tell us where to find Urgost. Have you ever faced a dragon before? No. That is a risk I have gladly avoided. One does not willingly seek out a dragon unless there is no choice. You are afraid of dragons? Only a fool would not fear a dragon. If Urgost has survived this long, he must be full of the guile and cunning of his kind, abominations that they are. And this will make him even more dangerous. But that changes nothing. If we must prevent his alliance with Agandar, then fear must be set aside and the dragon found. We should follow Gorin's advice and seek Urgost's whereabouts from Radagast. friends were eager to offer their services. Perhaps they do not fully appreciate the danger. What can you tell me of them? Armanel is a seasoned warrior. He knows full well what he faces, and accepts it gladly. Baron Thor is young and eager to prove himself. But he has deep courage, and few can match his swiftness on the wing. But you need not take my word. Ask them yourself. They will gladly speak with you if you so desire. I worry about my people. We do not dine are so few now, and our families are scattered across the north. Perhaps I should go to their defense. And yet, what could you do for them? One man, alone. Were there a hundred Eridans, you could not withstand the power that is set against you. But to 
together, we may strike a blow far greater than any army could achieve. You rangers are hardy folk. Trust them to survive, as they have for so long, while we do what must be done to bring down Agandar. Only then will your homes and our areas be safe. You are right, Belarus. We cannot falter now. We will go on. You have but to say the word, and we will press on. We will be departing soon. We will be ready. 